lawn. We love lawn in America. Right, Clint? Get off my lawn. I was just leaving, actually. In the US, we have three times more lawn than corn. That's enough lawn to fill the entire state of Wisconsin, yet not enough to fill one stomach. Unless, of course, you're a goat. <coughs> but still, we love lawn. You can tell by how much we give lawn, yet how little lawn give us. Each year, Americans spend billions of dollars on trillions of gallons of water, millions of metric tons of fertilizer, and millions of pounds of pesticides. And what do we get in return? Son of a bitch. To cut it, the American lawn's kind of like your older brother who moved back home after college. Drinks a lot, wastes your inheritance, full of shit, and after all these years, still gets caught with weed. Even though mom swears she sprayed him with pesticides. In the US, we have 40.5 million acres of lawn, which needs water. How much water? Most lawns need an inch of water per week. Thanks, Howcast. And at an inch a week, NASA researchers say we'd pour 60 million acre feet of mostly drinkable water on our lawns every year. But let's just pretend we only use a tenth of that. That's still two trillion gallons of water on grass. With two trillion gallons, you could give the 750 million people without access to clean drinking water seven gallons of water a day. But the best is yet to come. The average sprinkler system in the United States is only 55% efficient. So almost half the water doesn't even hit the target? That's all right, the lakes uh, have enough to become a desert. Then there's a synthetic fertilizer. We dump three million tons of this cow crap and posture on our lawns every year, which is a problem because it's a huge source of nitrous oxide. Now I know what you're thinking. How can nitrous be the bad guy? It's what got you through the dentist's office and Fish's first reunion tour. But nitrous is also great at heating the planet. It warms the air 300 times more than CO2. What I'm trying to say is we're fertilizing our lawns with fast and furious racing sequences. I need NOS. NOS. Nos, 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 nos. Then there's the pesticides. Of the 30 commonly used lawn pesticides, over half have studies pointing toward carcinogens. Well, at least that explains why the dudes on your lawn look like they walked off the set of Breaking Bad. That's not all though. There's 21 with reproductive effects, 15 with neurotoxicity, and 13 are linked with birth defects. And all that stuff can just wash into the water. Oh, and then there's those little signs that Walter White leaves behind. I mean, who makes a no smoking sign but replaces a cigarette with people? And Scruffy. I didn't forget about you, Scruffy. So whose idea were these water-sucking synthetic crap cancer cocktails with the biodiversity of a basketball court anyway? Well, here's the quick history. We stole lawns from the Brits. The British used their lawn as a symbol of status and power. They were like the Victorian Ferrari. Now lawns actually work fine in many parts of Europe because of the climate. On this side of the pond though, we have to work pretty hard to keep the European lawns from dying. But we still have lawns everywhere, even in the desert, because we've convinced ourselves they add value to property. That's why homeowners associations still do this. The Cordy's got this letter from the city of Glendora. It said you have 60 days to get your lawn looking like this, or else. Or the, and the penalty was fines of $100 to $500 or criminal prosecution. Now there are some studies that say lawns are good for the environment. It's just that a lot of them also happen to be sponsored by the Outdoor Power Equipment Institute or Scott's miracle Grow. Very unbiased. Occasionally, you'll find prolonged studies from our nation's prestigious public universities. But then you find out that university gets funding from Scott's. What a load of shit. And there are some benefits to lawns, like storing carbon and limiting heat islands and preventing erosion. It's just in most cases, trees, native plants, and native grasses can do the same thing, only with more biodiversity and less pesticides. But look, I'm not gonna sit here and say death to all yards. That's crazy. And Clint would kill me. I blow a hole in your face and then I go in the house and I sleep like a baby. What'd I tell you? Look, I know we need lawns and parks and green space. I mean, how else would I play bocce ball or throw my lawn darts or slip on my slip and slide? Have you ever tried that on concrete? Murder on the nipples, sorry guys. Look, I'm just trying to give you positive alternatives that would save you time and money. Get off my lawn. But I thought we had a moment back there. I was vulnerable and told you I played bocce ball. Well, anyway, if you like your yard, here's how you can save time, money, and the environment. Just switch to a low impact lawn. Easy, doesn't kill the beezies, beautiful, cover turf. How do you get one? Simple, legalize it. Let the weed be, man. I mean, think about it. Would you rather have free weeds on your lawn or pay for the cancer in your water? It's a tough one. If you wanna cut the lawn, that's cool, but leave the clippings, free fertilizer. But maybe you're more adventurous and you wanna let it grow, like the 70s. Not only will you save a ton of gas, but do you ever think about the fact that we never let grass grow long enough to seed and reproduce? force of being to live forever? 
yet never get freaky, even if it's asexual? Who am I to judge? Other options, grow some native plants or turn your lawn into a garden. Same amount of work, but when was the last time your lawn gave you phallic Thanksgiving decorations? Bonus parents, they double as safe sex education tools. That gourd did not get those bumps just hanging on the vine. It fell into the flower bed. Got flowered by a flower. Okay, I took that too far. So there you go. If you like your lawn, lots of low impact ways to keep it. It ain't rocket science for Christ's sake. He's coming around. But if you don't like your lawn, allow yourself to think just for a second how awesome it would be to go all office space on that mower. Of course, on second thought, you could also donate it to Goodwill and get the tax deduction. A little too late now, but 